I'm back. This is Chandler from Melda Production, and today I'm going to be going over M Spectral Dynamics. Somebody asked me recently about this, and if I could go over like the gate and the processor with the uh, expansion and upwards compression, downwards compression, etc. So I'll show this. They wanted me to talk about mastering, and to be honest, I'm not a great <laughs> mastering engineer, but uh, this is something I did. So I already mixed this, and I have it here. Uh, these are the settings I used for it. I'll just bypass it here. I use a preset actually. But this is with it off. Now I'm going to turn it on and turn it on and off so you can hear the difference. So hopefully you can hear it in there. It should sound a little bit brighter and a little bit more lively when it's in. And that's all I wanted to do here. I'm doing about like five decibels of compression, but this probably doesn't sound like it's compressing it that much. It almost sounds like a EQ. So what in special dynamics does is it's kind of like a multi-band compressor, except instead of having, you know, like three bands, four bands, five bands, this has maybe over a hundred bands. I don't know how many it has, but a ton. And here you can look here and you can see how it is compressing each frequency. And this, I think, sometimes is a little bit more natural than just EQing, because if you EQ it, you know, it's always gonna drop that in like 100 uh, hertz frequency or 2000 hertz frequency. Whereas this, if it doesn't cro cross the uh, threshold, I'm getting tongue tied here. If it doesn't cross the threshold, it's not going to actually compress it. And so this can sound more natural, especially if you have a really dynamic piece. So let me show you exactly how to do this. I'm gonna go in here to B. And instead of using one of these presets, I'll just click on default. Now you can change the smoothness and the naturality if you want. And these will determine, you know, how fine it gets. If it's, you know, a 20 band compressor or a you know, thousand band compressor. I don't, I don't think it goes up to a thousand. Although I don't know, actually. And so having it smoother will look smoother here, but also it will sound a little bit more natural sometimes. But if there's just like one annoying peak, you might want to turn it down. So that's kind of up to you. It defaults at 5%. Let's get into here with the processor. By changing this, it's going to work like a compressor. But as I said, it's going to be a compressor for the lots of the frequencies. So let's move this up and down. You can adjust the attack and release here, but I don't want to really go over that. If you see my other videos on attack and release, it'll show you what it does. With these, with it having so many bands, it's not actually the same. It sounds a little bit different, uh, but let's not mess with that for now. Let's just get to compressing. So when I start moving, it doesn't sound that different, but let's click the set button and it'll set our output automatically. So the input and outputs are the same like this. So you hear when it's on, it sounds a little bit brighter, but actually all it's doing is just compressing this 100 to 200 hertz area and making that a little bit uh, more smooth. And so if you have a piece like this where it's like, eh, it's a little bit muddy, this can actually clear it up. And of course you might say, hey, you should fix that in mixing, which can be true. But in case you can't for some reason, or you're like, ah, I don't think it really needs to be remixed. It's generally good. This can be good to, you know, just bring out some of that brightness without, uh, you know, using EQ, which can destroy it all the time. So if you had a quiet part, it may not be hitting this threshold. It sounds okay, but then when it gets loud, you know, it brightens it up for you. So that's easiest way I think to use it. Of course, you can adjust the ratio and everything. Uh, something else, this gate. So this is the same thing. Let's use the threshold here. I'll turn it up and you can hear what happens. It's fairly easy to understand. <laughs> Now you're probably wondering like, why doesn't it shut everything off? 
Remember, this is you know, spectrally. So that way, things that are above this, like maybe a loud drum hit, are going to come through here and they're not going to be cut off. But maybe small cymbal hits are going to be below the threshold, especially if I put it up, like, say, here. The cymbals might be here and you won't hear them. But the bass drum hit or the snare drum might be above this, so you will hear them. That's why it almost sounds like it has a, uh, I don't know, a, a bandpass filter on it. So there's lots of things we can do with that. This is really useful for noise with instruments. And I don't know if I would necessarily use this for mastering, but if you have an individual instrument, this can be really good to cut that noise in between the hits. So that's how that works. Let's go back to this processor and let's use this upward ver uh, button here. So, or downwards, I should say. So this will almost be like an expander. So let's turn this on and let's play it. So you can see that works as almost an expander, almost the same as the gate, but I can change the uh, ratio here. So that way I can still let a little bit through if I want. And you saw what I was doing with the range and the knee size, how those can affect things. You're probably wondering, okay, that's good. You have the gate, you can use this in a, as an expander, but I know lots of people want to know like, hey, can you do upward expansion? You can. There has to be a kind of a workaround here, but I'll show you exactly how to do it here. For this, oftentimes I want to use the gate or this upward expansion here to first set this because I don't want to be expanding things that are near silence because that's going to bring up a bunch of noise. It can get really loud. Don't want it. And for this, always use the limiter. Don't blow out your speakers. So let's get started. I'll show you exactly how to do it. The way to do it is not doing anything here, setting this as a gate or uh, you know, like expander here to cut off the silence. And then we're going to use this little button here. This is going to allow us to draw in our shape. So let's play it. You saw where our processor was. It actually puts little nodes here. If I can zoom in a bit there. So you see these nodes. Turn it off, it goes back there. What I want to do is I want to make another, actually, well, I gotta take this. I'm gonna take another node here, double click, add it, and then I'm gonna move this up. So let's listen to it. Okay. So you're hearing it's bringing out those like really soft notes and making them loud. Let's set this again so it changes the output. probably way too much. I'm doing this, you know, just for demonstration purposes. You probably don't want to use that much compression and you might want to even further down like this. Now, one thing you'll probably notice is as I do this, the closer I move it down here to silence, it's going to do more to compress it. If I move it up here, you'll notice down here, the silence is not doing that much. So it's not going to do that much upwards uh, compression. So you want to move down here. And you can move it up here and kind of change it uh, to suit your needs, which I'll show you here. Let's turn the output down and let's move it around.
so that's one way you can do it. Actually, I think maybe it's better if I use the gate actually for this instead. So set the gate. I usually like to set it a little bit lower here. So that's where you can't hear it at all. And then I'll go in here and add another node and start moving it around. So hopefully in there you could hear it's bringing out those details, especially in the symbols and things like that. Now, I'm not sure if I would actually use this on a whole mix for mastering. I'd probably just use the normal compression instead of you know doing all of this. And of course, make sure you play with the ratio. Sometimes it's not good to go all the way to infinity here. Sometimes it's a lower ratio. It defaults to 1.5, and sometimes I think that's good. That's what I used for the actual mastering here. By doing this and messing with sometimes the smoothness, naturality, uh, of course, check the quality. Sometimes that can make a difference too. Uh, I wouldn't change it. Like, let's say, for example, I'll do it for low when I'm monitoring it and then change it to extreme because it'll change the sound. So I like to just set it once and then mess around and change all your processor and dynamic detection settings, etc., and just leave it there as opposed to, you know, oh, start with minimal to save me some... CPU and then move it to extreme to output because it can sound different. I, I recommend not doing that. But hopefully this gave you some ideas of how you can use this processor to compress things or expand things and how you can use the gate and even use this little button here to create some upwards compression if you want. And in the future, maybe I'll do some more videos about this, but hopefully that gave you a good idea of things you can do with it. If you like this, give me a thumbs up. Leave me any questions and comments down below and check out all the other products at MelderProduction.com. Till next time, see you.